Hi everyone, this is Vinod here and today I will take you through the C9800 uh, CL installation on ESXi platform. So we'll go each uh, step, I mean we'll actually walk through the each step and understand exactly how do we deploy 9800 CL on ESXi platform. So before proceeding on 9800 actual installation or the demo, let me just walk you through the data sheet and understand exactly how do we proceed uh, with uh, respective ESXi version. So the earlier version which was like 6.5, if you're installing 9800CL, uh, you may come across some problem where GUI will not work and if that is the case then you need to go ahead with OVF tool and that's where um, you would see here there are steps involved of, uh, I mean with respect to 6.5 how can you install uh, 9800CL using VMware OVF tool. I have 6.7 so I don't have as such uh, issue with the GUI for uh, installation so I'll walk you through without uh, OVF tool and before proceeding for that uh, let me just give some clarity on the deployment uh, types. So you, you could see here there are different deployment types which include small, medium and large. So it is based on your scale. Uh, you can select the appropriate version. So for a lab purpose I'm going with the small where I need 4 virtual CPU, uh, 8 GB RAM and 16 GB hard disk. So uh, another important part which I wanted to actually give clarity on is about selecting appropriate interface to and mapping to the different virtual network. So if you could see here, uh, I have got three interfaces in 9800CL, Gig1, Gig2 and Gig3. So some customers may actually deploy only Gig1 and will have a default route pointing to Gig1 gate, I mean the uh, wireless management interface gateway and uh, you know send a, a traffic across from gig one there are customers who are using gig one only for out of band management and gig two for all actual traffic which includes your ap registration and uh, a wireless management uh, even the client traffic would be going through gig two which is nothing but a network adapter two in our esx environment gig three or network adapter three is uh, will have a separate network which is used for back-to-back -back connectivity or redundant port connectivity. So in my case, I don't have HA environment. I'm not going to install HA. So I have, I'll not be selecting uh, network adapter 3. And uh, if you are selecting uh, the Geek 2 for a trunk in ESXA environment, there is no option called trunk uh, in ESXi, that's when you need to select VLAN ID as 4095, which will automatically uh, get that port enabled with the trunk. So another uh, settings which we need to be careful about is uh, security policy on the ESXi environment, especially on the port group and we switch. Uh, so there are three settings under the security, uh, which uh, we need to select appropriately based on the Cisco recommendation. So promiscuous mode is uh, to be uh, uh, selected as accept and forge transmit should be accept. MAC address changes can be reject. So what is promiscuous mode is, uh, uh, it's let's say if you select accept, that means uh, any, uh, any VM or all the VMs which are connected to that respective vSwitch, you would able to see the traffic traversing to that virtual switch if you are selecting promiscuous mode. So it's like you're, you will able to sniff uh, the traffic uh, through that vSwitch. Uh, I mean, if you have multiple VMs connected, uh, all the traffic will be able to see there. Forge transmit is your uh, outbound traffic going out from that adapter. MAC address change is inbound traffic uh, which uh, like you know you're entering into the vSwitch. So forge transmit is I mean it's to be selected as accept according to Cisco best practice. 
this is my setup so you have got three adapter vm network new trunk and rp port uh, which are mapped to respective switch so i have selected three different switch but again it depends on uh, if you have uh, one single switch you can actually map appropriate uh, port group uh, and isolate from each other but uh, i've selected because i have got other lab as well uh, this is for um, this is specific to my lab so vm network is mapped to v switch which is out of band management new network uh, port group is mapped to uh, the trunk switch uh, i have called as oob switch so ignore about uh, n like you know the name but it is a trunk switch rp port so uh, the rp port is used for uh, redundancy port connectivity and that's it and i have got four vlans vlan 40 is for vlan management interface so i'll get ip address uh, uh, for wireless management from VLAN 40, one IP from out of band management, another uh, like you know VLAN 30 is used for AP management, VLAN 11 is for corporate client with PSK as authentication, and VLAN 31 is for corporate client with dot one x. So I'll have multiple labs where I'll actually cover client connectivity as well. So this is uh, this is all about theory. So let me select the appropriate OBA file. I'll put name as C9800 new. I am going to select 17.6. So when I'm installing this or I'm showing the demo at that time, 17.6.1 was the latest one. I'm actually going ahead with the latest one. I will be selecting data stair one. And this is where I need to select uh, appropriate uh, port group. So I'll be selecting gig one as out of band management, gig two as my as my trunk and gig three. Any, I mean, even though I'm not going to connect, but I'll keep as RP port mapping to that. And then I'll go next and finish. So it will install that OVA file. And all right, so we are uh, getting the uh, configuration wizard dialog. So let's start configuring initial config wizard. So uh, do you like to enter the initial configuration dialog? No. Uh, yes, I want to. I want to just terminate this, and then I should be getting uh, the uh, prompt for config. Yeah. So I got the initial config prompt enable prompt now i will actually configure the initial commands which are really required to bring the gui and uh, we should able to access the uh, gui through https see my ip addressing my out of band management is 192.168.0.0/24 so i'll be configuring 141 wireless management is part of vlan 40 so i'll be configuring 40.141 AP management is VLAN 30 and client as I said is 11 and 31. So two different VLANs are there for two different client types or two different SSIDs. So let me configure out of band management and wireless management to just bring the GUI up. So I will remove this IP address which is dynamically got assigned. VLAN 1, no IP address, shut, interface gig. No switch port, IP address 192.168.0.140, sorry, 141. No shirt. And then static route pointing towards my out of band management infra. All right. Then I would be configuring gig2 as trunk. So I will be allowing VLAN 30 which is AP management, VLAN 11, VLAN 31 and VLAN 40. No shut.
username Terminate. All right, so I configured username, hostname, and IP addressing for out of band management. Uh, now I need to configure wireless management interface related commands. Okay, let me configure wireless management VLAN now. So my wireless management interface IP address is 40.141 and static route for that 40.0 All right. If you want to skip day zero config through GUI, you can configure certificate uh, and wireless management, uh, you know, interface CLI command directly from config wizard only. So you need not to go through day zero GUI config. So I would be doing that wireless management interface VLAN 40. All right, wireless, um, wireless management VW it's the command trust point, not that it's wireless config W VWLC. So we need. We also need to configure a certificate for AP to get registered on virtual environment. I mean, on C9800 C, uh, CL, uh, because the hardware appliance will have default MIC certificate. So VW wireless config is wireless VWLC key size 2048 signature algorithm SHA256 so it is configuring this certificate now if I give command let it get completed then we can see if the certificate got installed All right show wireless trust point management trust point you can see it's available self signed certificate so looking good here let me see if my line vty has got ssh access and it is um, what else let me see ip http it is there so it looks good for me. Now let me try to ping uh, my gateway gateway for out of band management and uh, my wireless management. 192.168.0.1 I'm able to reach 2.168.40.1 Yes, I'm able to reach. But how about my AP management which is VLAN 30? I'm not able to reach because I don't have static routes, right? So I need to add static routes pointing towards wireless management gateway. So let me do that. 192.168.30.0. Yes, I am able to reach. So basically, uh, I have configured um, out of band management IP address and wireless management IP address as you can see here. Uh, my out of band management is 0 0.141 and my wireless management is 40.141. And I'm able to reach my AP management subnet as well. Now, what is left is uh, my AP country code because that's part of day zero config. So let me do that as well. 
but before configuring country uh, code we need to disable radio so ep.11 uh, 5 gigahertz shutdown yes same thing for 2.4 shut down yes and then ap country i would be configuring gb in you configuring gb for that all right and then i will enable radios all right so now if i try to access my gui i should able to access so let's try that yes i am able to access let me try to access it Alright, so I'm not getting day zero prompt, right? Because I configured my re, uh, country code, I configured while certificate, sorry, the certificate for AP registration. So that's why it's not getting prompted. So I'm good to go ahead and start registering access point, but I need to get my, uh, you know, the shared service, including DSCP scope configured for EP man. So that will be in the second part. I'll be showing you how AP gets registered and uh, even I'll walk you through the debug commands about how AP is going through each step to get registered. And thanks for now.